guys, Harrison here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to copper plate on the steel and I'm also going to show you how to nickel plate because that's part of a process you need for copper plating on steel. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to actually copper plate on the steel. Um, I see a lot of people thinking or saying that you can copper plate on the steel just using copper sulfate and um, that's not the case. You have to use a preliminary coating, um, usually nickel metal is the best way to go, to actually plate onto steel using copper. Um, I'm going to show you guys why you can't just plate onto steel directly. I'll show you guys what's happening. I'm just going to pour some of this copper sulfate where you can buy at a hardware store. Sol is root killer. Pour it into a beaker here and just add some tap water. I'm not using distilled. Get it in there and then just going to stir it around to create a simple solution here. Okay, so now we got the solution made here of our copper sulfate. I'm going to prove to you guys that you cannot plate onto steel raw. So we have our copper sulfate bath and without any leads attached for electricity, you'll notice that it actually starts to copper plate it, but it's very burnt and it does not stick very well. And the reason behind that is, is in a normal copper plating solution, you have your iron here, which gives off electrons from your source, a battery or you know power source, gives off, the, gives off electrons. Then you have these two ions, you have your copper and the sulfate ions floating around in solution the positive copper ions attracted to the iron which is then given to electrons and then is reduced at the surface so then you have a copper layer forming around the surface but when you have something like iron directly in there the copper sulfate actually has a reaction with the iron so the sulfate ion would rather be with the iron ion than with a copper ion so what happens is the a iron iron two plus ion is formed and that leaves two extra electrons behind, which is then neutralized with the copper. So the copper sits on the surface here, and then the iron is being taken away though. So since that iron is being taken away underneath the copper, it does not stick and that's why it comes right off because you're actually taking away the iron underneath the copper. So that is why you can't copper plate directly onto iron. But the workaround is to copper iron to nickel plate this first, and then you can copper plate onto the nickel where the nickel won't have this reaction with the sulfate ion. Anyway, so that's the wrap up of it. So let's get into actually doing this and I'll show you guys how. So the first thing you're gonna do is to buy a nickel plate of some sort, pure nickel. Um, you can use nickel tack strips, which they sell, but this is just a nickel plate. Thank God for $10. Um, nickel's actually relatively expensive. Again, this little thing was just 10 bucks, barely weighs anything. Um, so you're gonna need a piece of nickel, a basic electric source, for nickel plating, you're going, to, you're going to want around about one to two volts. So for this, I'm just going to use a buck converter on this six volt supply so I can bring that down to that two volt rating. Um, you can use a battery too, like most batteries are 1.5 volts, a simple um, AA one. So you can also use that. Um, yeah, so anyway, so once you got the nickel plate, you're going to create a nickel plating solution. So the best way to do that is, is to either buy nickel sulfate or you can make nickel sulfate. Um, making it, you're gonna have to at least have, you know, some knowledge of chemistry and have some equipment, but, um, you're just gonna need some sulfuric acid, some hydrogen peroxide. I don't have it right here, but, uh, higher concentration, the better hydrogen peroxide, and then your nickel metal, and then you're gonna let that react and that will create your nickel sulfate. Um, the nickel will be oxidized by the hydrogen peroxide to form, to form nickel oxide and the nickel oxide will then be reacted with the sulfuric acid to create nickel sulfate. So then once you get that nickel sulfate solution, you're all set for your electrolyte. Um, to make the solution better, you can add some boric acid into it, which is acts as a pH balancer. So um, that helps you get a better plate. So once you get that, that's all you need for your nickel plating. And again, if you don't have, you know, the hydrogen peroxide, you just don't feel like making the nickel solution, you can always just um, buy it online. All right, so I'm gonna have a link in the description for you guys for a um, video on how to make copper sulfate. It will give you all the details of stoichiometric amounts and whatnot. But um, here right now, I just have a copper sulfate solution. Um, I think there's about five grams for this 200 milliliters. The concentration doesn't really matter too much. Um, the solution will still work. And I think I added about a teaspoon of this boric acid for this 200 milliliters. So just follow that ratio kind of, um, it's not very specific. Um, it'll still work either way. And the boric acid just acts as a pH balancer in the solution. So 
let's get to plating some steel with this thing. All right, so now you guys gotta get your power supply ready. So here I'm just using a battery pack and it only spits out about six volts, but I'm using this buck converter to lower the voltage. And as you see on the multimeter, I'm running about 1.9 volts. Um, you can just use again the double A and this is for the nickel plating solution. So let's get to cleaning our steel part up and hooking it all together. Steel part we're gonna be plating and um, a key part to doing this is to clean the part first. So I normally hit this with a steel wire brush and then I um, dump it in some hydrochloric acid. It's half water, half hydrochloric acid bought from the store. Um, dip it in there, I normally put it in for about 30 seconds or so just to clean off any final grease or anything that's possibly on the part. And once you have that done, she's ready to go into the bath. Also, before we get going here, um, just be aware of the copper sulfate solution. Copper salts are known to be carcinogenic, so just try not to get it on your skin. Other than that, it's not really too dangerous. So to get started plating on your part, you're just gonna take it and on the positive side, well, sorry, the, yes, the positive side is where your part is placed on. That's where your electrons are gonna be coming off. So then the nickel ions are gonna be attracted to that and plate onto there. Drop that into your solution. Then you take your nickel plate here. Then you take your other, your negative, and then plop that in the solution. And make sure they're standing as far apart as relatively possible. And in the bath, depending on how thick the plate you want, I'd say a good plate would be about 20 minutes. So you just gotta let this go for 20 minutes. Um, you should see some bubbling. That means that the electricity is flowing and it's all set and I'll come back to you guys when it's done. Okay, the part's been in there for about 20 minutes. I just pulled it out and you'll notice it's a nice shiny metallic color, which is good, which means we have our nickel plate on here. So now it's time to put it into the copper bath. So for the copper bath, I am just using copper sulfate mixed with sulfuric acid. Now, I think for about every 100 milliliters, I put about five milliliters of sulfuric acid. Um, it just helps with the plating. Um, and then you see it's not too concentrated, which isn't that big of a deal. As long as it has those copper ions in there, it will plate. So now that we got that down, we're going to switch our leads from our nickel bath to instead of the nickel plate, for our negative it goes to the copper rod i have here and then now we'll take our steel part that is now nickel plated and then we can place it into our copper bath and let that copper plate and for this you want to run it at about three volts so if you're using the batteries you can just um, double the amount of batteries and you should be all set okay so our part has come out of the copper plating bath and here it is as you can see it's a little bit dull um, and if you want to polish it up, you can use something like this, just a metal polish for copper. And yeah, so it came to a nice durable coat. And this is even durable enough to handle steel wool. As you see, I have some steel wool here. So it's a pretty durable coating on there to withstand that steel wool pretty good. So yeah, that's how you copper plate steel. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time.